Hello everyone, this is Glenn Irvin and this is a quick tutorial about how to go ahead and create quizzes and tests inside of Schoology and even how to go ahead and import other quizzes and tests you've already created into current quizzes and tests that you're giving. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to have to go to your materials section here and then we're going to click on add materials, we'll drop down to add test or quiz. So I'll go ahead and do that and we have several options we need to fill in here. I'm just going to put example exam. It's going to be my example test here. I'm going to, I can give it a due date, though I'm not going to do that right now. I can change the point value of the test here. I can give it a category, whatever the category uh, that I want to go ahead and grade it under. And of course, the numeric value, I can change that. Now, you can make it visible or you can make it hidden from the students, depending upon if you're working on the test or if you don't want them to see it just yet. And of course, you can enable or disable the comments. I'm just going to leave it visible for right now. And then you get this screen here, which is our basic screen of how to go ahead and create the actual test itself. To be able to add a question, of course, I'm just going to click the Add Question uh, tab here. And I have different types of questions I can go ahead and create. True, false, multiple choice. I can order a set of ordering things, short answer or essay questions and then fill in the blank and matching are basically my options of types of questions I can have. The multiple choice is just your typical multiple choice. You have your question which you set here. You set your choices right here. You can give multiple correct answers by clicking multiple sections here to be able to say which are the correct answers. You can choose whether or not to go ahead and have uh, your choices randomized which I usually do. You can give them partial credit if you have multiple answers and you want, and they got one out of the two answers correct. You can give them partial credit. You can put the number of points that the question is valued at. You can even time the question. How much time do they have to answer the specific question itself? Okay. So there's a lot of different options within that uh, structure there. I'm just going to press cancel down here and get back to my main screen here. And the other type of question that is a little bit weird is the fill in the blank. It can be confusing. Um, and basically the way the fill in the blank works is you only need to put one underscore, as it says up here, in kind of really light coloring. Let me do an example here. Um, I'm going to say... Uh, team, the football team from Minnesota. are the and then to be able to go ahead and do a blank space I'm going to do an underscore like this and then down here something's going to pop up and basically it says answer one now I can type in Vikings of course but if I wanted to make sure like let's say a kid didn't capitalize Vikings and that's a correct answer I could put that too right uh, let's say they are, were thinking about a college football team <laughs> and you still want to give them credit for gophers because your question was a little bit weird like mine is, right? I want to make sure that I put the not a capital letter on gophers. So if you wanted to give multiple options as far as the, the correct answers, you can do that too. I kind of like that. But remember, you only need one little underscore to be able to go ahead and do that. Don't put more than one because then it gives you various answers there. Okay? Just like before, you can have a word bank if you want to create one. You can put some words in here uh, very easily. It says you go ahead and separate the words uh, with just a new line, okay? Um, you can go ahead and allow partial credit. You give a grade value there too. So the fill in the blank is a little bit one of the weirder ones. I want to show you something amazing though. Once you create a test or multiple tests, multiple quizzes, you can import those tests into a new test. So I'll show you that right now. I'm going to press add question and this says import test or quiz. So I'm going to say import test or quiz. And actually, I'm going to, uh, from Question Banks, actually, that's the best one. Import test or quiz comes from a different uh, resource. From Question Banks comes from your local saved things. You can pick individual questions, or you can make it random questions itself, too, which random questions basically means that you said there's 20 questions there. You tell it to select five ra uh, questions randomly from the group and then it can create a, a random quiz for each student. I'm just going to select individual questions and it takes me to my resources and it'll show me which test I've actually already created like Viaje de Su Vida, Pobre Ana is a test here. I'm going to select El Cuerpo Quiz 
and it says which ones of these do I want to bring in. If I want to bring in all of them, I just select it like this uh, by selecting all of them. If I just want to select a couple of these words, I can just select them individually. I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to press add questions. And the questions and the correct responses that you already created in a previous quiz are now part of this. Now you see something's happening here. Now it says I have 20 questions imported and it's worth 200 points. Remember that originally my test was worth 100, so now I got to change this to make sure it matches what my test is now currently, which is 20 questions and 200 points. If I want to go ahead and get in here too and I want to preview this, I want to actually take the test myself to make sure it's the way that I want it. You just press preview, begin the test, and you actually take the test yourself. In the settings, you can go back and change any of the settings. Uh, and these are important settings. I'm going to go down here because some of them are weird. Like this one right here, availability. It says hide now. I want to make this available now. Make sure you change that. It's kind of a weird setting as a default setting. It makes it unavailable. If you want a time limit, you can press yes. How, much, how many minutes to take the whole quiz? Okay. Uh, how many times do you want to allow a student to do it? I know teachers that do it three times. I have some quizzes that I do as formative assessments. I let them do an unlimited amount of times. You could tell it to grade it by the highest score or the average or just the last score that they received. Okay, it's pretty cool stuff. You can make them randomize the questions so that each student, if you were doing a test all at once at the same time, each student gets a different question number one. Um, things like language keyboard for my class would be important because you can put the Spanish language keyboard there. Uh, can the students review their questions before submitting? It's a great one. I always say yes. So at the end, before it says finish, they can go back and look at all of their answers and make sure they did it correctly. This is important too. If you have Wi-Fi that comes in and out, what if in the middle of a test your Wi-Fi kind of you know fizzles out, especially on an iPad? You want them to be able to resume that test. So it's kind of saving as it goes along. I put resumable on all the time. Uh, and then, of course, at the end, do you want them to go ahead and view the submissions? Okay. Do you want them to go ahead and be able to see um, whether or not you know they got which ones they got right, which ones they got wrong? You select this thing and you say yes or yes, even with the correct answers, you can select. Okay. Then, of course, you press save changes and you're going to be done there too. I'll go back to questions. So anyway, um, this is pretty simple to go ahead and use. I just want to make sure then here, once I'm ready to go ahead and have it ready to go, I'm going to make this available. Right now it says unpublished and available. I'm going to make it available now and save. And then up here it says available. The students can actually see it. If this is not available, it, the students won't be able to see it. They won't be able to go ahead and uh, uh, answer any of the questions there. Cool. So that's a quick uh, review of how to go ahead and create tests and quizzes. It's super awesome on Schoology, um, especially the import function, moving tests from formative assessments and even to make it one big summative assessment. Once you create the questions, you can go ahead and keep reusing them um, in your class. Cool. That's all I got. Bye-bye.